And you also told me before that you do some mobile hacking, mobile hacking or mobile pen testing. What's your setup for this? Yeah, well, the setup is a bit more complex. In, in the bug bounty program that I'm working on, that I've been working on in 2023, they also have an app, a mobile app. And luckily, I can test it on my own device because it doesn't have, it's made for testing. It, it doesn't have SSL pinning and I can test it on my non-rooted phone. Okay. But it usually involves having a, an emulator, for example. I also have an iPhone for testing uh, iPhone apps. I've tested iPhone apps uh, in the past. The testing usually involves an emulator, for example, like it used to be Jenny Motion, but I think it's very heavy and non convenient, for example. Right now it's Nox. So Nox is um, really good, really easy to set up. Nox, you have to have installed ADB to be able to bridge between uh, your laptop. There's, of course, there's Frida. So the, the setup is comprised of Nox, Frida, your laptop, of course, and Burp Suite. This is for dynamic testing. Of course, there's also uh, looking into the code itself, decompiling the app for this. For example, you can use APK Studio, which is a GUI graphical user interface tool that you can decompile the app, try to get the sources and look into the code itself. Sometimes the, the app is obfuscated and it's not as straightforward, but it usually works. Then you have that component. You also have to look into the device security itself. So how is the information or the data stored on the device itself? Where is it stored? Is it stored in plain text? You usually look into the data folder, the name of the app. You look into the shared preferences. Inside the shared preferences, there's also leak stuff. There's also the cache folder in, in the app folder. There is also the database folder, the files folder. Uh, if you look into MSTG Mobile Security Testing Guide, it's going to give you more insights on the device itself or the data that's on the device, um, the security of that. Of course, there's also quirks like if you are able, so let's say a company wouldn't accept your submission because they don't accept rooted devices as part of the scope. So they say that if you're able to extract solid information from the app or from the user or from the phone without having the phone to be, without having a rooted phone, then your submission is valid. But there's also uh, the situation when the, where the manifest file allows backups. So if you're able to, if you're dealing with a non-rooted device, and you're able to backup the app, move the backup onto another device. The backup usually is going to include the data folder, which is only accessible by root. So when you're actually extracting the backup okay. from a non-rooted yeah. device, you're getting the information that's only available to the root. So if there's sensitive information in there, that's a valid impactful finding. And there are a lot of situations where the manifest allows, where you can see the manifest uh, that allow backup is set to true. And that's a security issue. 